16th, 1-6, uh, virtual town hall meeting for Brookline small businesses and nonprofit community. Um, we missed seeing you all last week. I hope you had a great 4th of July holiday weekend. As a reminder, we've transitioned to a bi-weekly town hall meeting schedule. So our next meeting will be on Thursday, July 23rd at 9 a.m. Uh, we'll be keeping this morning's meeting short. As some of you know, the Chamber is hosting a business-related legislative update with State Representatives Tommy Vitolo and Nika Elugardo at 10 a.m. today. Uh, so we're going to wrap up a bit early and end by about 9.45 so you can get a coffee, refill, take a break, do what you need to do before the Chamber's event. Uh, if you haven't already registered for the 10 a.m. event, it's not too late. Uh, Debbie Miller, Executive Director of Brookline Chamber of Commerce and a member of the Town Small Business Development Committee is here to tell you a little bit more about the event and how you can register. Uh, Debbie, take it away. Thank you, Raul. Uh, so we're really happy to be able to host uh, a webinar today at 10 o'clock uh, with Representatives Vitulo and El Ugardo. Um, it's great that they're going to be able to make some time for us because they will be in session later on today. Um, if any of you have any questions that you'd like to ask, it'll be a nice opportunity to ask questions. It'll also be a nice opportunity just to get caught up on what's happening there because they've had to move um, so quickly on so many different issues, as you know, and they've been pretty terrific about um, making changes and um, helping the business community. And I do think that said, there is more work, a lot more work that needs to be done. Uh, so we hope you'll join us today and I'll put the link in the chat box. Um, you can also find it right on the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce website and click on there and you'll get the link to the event when you register. Great, thank you, Debbie. All right, so as you recall from our last meeting, uh, Brookline's longtime director of environmental health, Pat Maloney, uh, who's a regular panelist on our virtual town hall meetings, retired in early June, July, uh, and we bid him a fond farewell. Uh, so Miranda Corbin, um, am I pronouncing that right, Meredith, or is it Corbin? Corbin? I'm not sure, we can confirm with Abby. All right, we're just getting to know Miranda. So um, Miranda will be joining us soon and Abby can correct us in a second. Um, uh, one of the town's senior public health inspectors will be stepping in as a public health department representative at our meetings. Uh, but since Miranda is taking some much needed and deserved vacation time this week, Abby Atkins, who's also a senior public health inspector is with us this morning to help answer any public health related questions. Um, welcome Abby, thank you for joining us this morning. How are you doing? Hi, thanks for having me. Good to be here. And it is Corbine. Corbine. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, Miranda, um, as you said, is on vacation right now. I, you know, what much deserved. So yeah, I'm filling in today and I'm hoping I can answer any questions that anybody has today. Um, if not, you know, I'll take it back to my colleagues and we'll try to get you an answer as quickly as possible. Great. Well, thank you so much for uh, holding it down today. Appreciate you being with us. Um, you know, as, as, as we know, um, you know, uh, summertime is is uh, is downtime for many, and of course, for our business owners, there's no such thing. Um, and uh, and for those that are running our nonprofit, so um, you can expect that that we'll continue to be here and really appreciate the um, the public health department for representing as well. Thank you, Evan. Um, all right. So before we dive into discussion and Q and A, um, we have a couple of quick updates from economic development. So I will turn it over now to Meredith. Good morning. Um, thank you, Raul. Just a couple of handful of updates. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and uh, show you. Uh, we developed some. Uh, so Annika Serene of Serene Design, who developed the storefront signs that you've been seeing a lot of windows around town that some of you might have in your storefronts, um, actually created some public health signs as well. Um, I hope you can all see this. So they're five different signs that promote different um, messages about social distancing and um, uh, good public health practices in the time of COVID. Um, and so these will be available. We're gonna have them uploaded on the town website so you can just download them and then post them um, in your businesses. And um, we receive feedback on these virtual town hall meetings. We also heard it at um, like Coolidge Corner Merchant Association meetings that there was a need for messaging that, um, you know, clearly stated what the uh, protocols were for if you're coming into stores, um, but needed those messages to be delivered in a welcoming, encouraging way for customers. So we're hoping that these signs fit the bill for that. Um, we'll be sending out probably a, a 
emails to the business organizations and then also um, in our business news blast to let you know where those um, where you can find those posters and display them in your stores. So um, public health signs coming soon regarding the storefront signs. I know there are a lot of businesses as we continue to move through the state's reopening plan. You're open in different ways now. Um, so if you need new signs or if um, I think a couple of the signs around town um, are looking a little faded from being in the window for the past couple of months. So um, if you need new signs, just ask. We have plenty available. And I'm going to include a link so you can go ahead and request some additional signs um, through that link. Small Business Grant Relief Program. We closed applications. We, we had applications open for about a month. Um, and we received in the neighborhood of 60 applications from businesses around Brookline. Um, we are in the process of um, finalizing grant agreements um, and are hoping to get funding to uh, the first round of grant recipients um, by the end of the month, hopefully by the week of July 20th. So we're working on that. Uh, outdoor seating update, I think as we talked about maybe two weeks ago, the Webster Street common area outdoor seating kind of tucked behind, it's in the Webster Street parking lot tucked behind um, the subway is up and running. There's some um, brightly colored picnic tables out there uh, with uh, umbrellas. And uh, we are in the process of working with some of the restaurants near Station Street and some of the Station Street business owners about creating some sort of common area outdoor seating in that area as well. So stay tuned for updates on that. And the final update is the Paycheck Protection Program, which had closed or applications closed on June 30th, was resurrected. Uh, and now the new deadline is August 8th. Uh, so I just wanted to put that on anyone's radar in case you might have missed the window and weren't able to submit an application before June 30th. And I'm going to include links to everything that I just talked about in the chat box. Um, so, Anne. I just have a question. I, it was hard to read, but on the, um, the notice about wearing masks, did it say if you have a medical problem that you should make other arrangements? So does that, do, can you, so does that mean if I owned a store and someone came in without a mask, I could tell them they can't come in? What, what, what does that mean? Yeah, so we, um, especially earlier on in these uh, weekly town hall meetings, this was a uh, concern a lot of business owners. Um, it's my understanding that if someone is refusing to wear a mask just because they don't want to wear a mask, you have the right to refuse service. But if someone is unable to wear a mask due to a medical reason, um, in uh, accordance with ADA standards, you have to um, okay. uh, accommodate them and provide them service in some other way. So we there, I think there is a sign. I'll share it again. Um, I'll share a larger version. Social distancing, we got the turkey in there. Very <laughs> Brookline. Um, so thank you for wearing a mask per order of the Brookline Public Health Department. And then there is another um, sign that provides more of an explanation. You're required to wear a mask unless you have a medical reason and we will accommodate you. Um, Thanks. Sure. So are there any other questions about those updates? I saw, uh, so Debbie did put the um, instructions about how to register for the 10 o'clock event in the chat box if you're interested in participating. Okay then. Um, so I think we'll turn it over to Abby for um, if there are any public health updates, but if not, maybe just um, provide some time for Q&A. Sure, um, so I can give a brief overview we um, as many people are, I'm sure are aware but moved into phase three step one this past Monday um, and with that um, movie theaters and outdoor performance venues are allowed to open museums cultural and historic sites fitness centers and health clubs um, certain indoor recreational activities with low potential for contact and um, professional sports teams you know with the authority that we rules that get a little more that's outside of really what we're more interested in here um and they also updated the capacity requirements for a lot of things um 
please bear with me here. I have two different screens going. Um, so indoor gatherings are limited to eight people per 1,000 square feet, but should not exceed 25 people in a single enclosed indoor space. Previously, it had been about 10 or 12. Um, and then outdoor gatherings um, within an enclosed space um, are limited to 25% of the facility's maximum permitted occupancy, but a maximum of 100 people regardless. And then like outdoor completely unenclosed areas like open fields, things like that um, are allowed to there, there's no capacity limits on those as long as social distancing and masks are being used. Um, so there's a lot of new guidance out there and a lot of it is related more to um, like summer camps and rec kids and adult recreation programs and things like that. Um, but, you know, the, the gyms, which I know is a thing that a lot of people have been very keen to get back open and get back in there, are now allowed to open, but they have to meet the, um, the guidelines put out by the state in terms of their, their cleaning schedules, their capacity limits, the maintaining certain distances between all of the um, fitness equipment and the, the people using the gyms. So um, that information is available on the state's website, but um, if anyone has any questions now, I will do my best to answer them with the caveat that this is all fairly new to us as well. So we're still trying to play catch up and um, make sure that we um, know everything that we need to know and we can convey that to you as clearly as possible. Great, thank you so much, Abby. Um, sure. So if we have any public health related questions, we have Abby here to help answer them. Um, looking at the Q&A box, uh, we have a question from Shulan from Washington Square. Um, regarding outdoor seating, did you request, um, uh, did you get requests for Washington Square? So my update, and then I'll let Kara jump in because I know that she'd been working on, um, she'd been in communication with you about outdoor seating in Washington Square. So last I heard, Public House is going to be expanding their outdoor seating into the parking lane. Um, and uh, there are a couple other of restaurants in Washington Square who are considering outdoor seating. Um, but I've also spoken with some restaurant owners who have permission for some outdoor seating, but haven't put their tables and chairs out just because they're very concerned about liability issues in terms of um, keeping uh, the seating and tables sanitized and um, so that's definitely something that I think um, is in the back of business owners' minds as well. And I'll turn it over to Kara. Yeah, and I'll just add, Shulan, that um, your idea, thank you so much for this idea about putting um, kind of common seating area basically in front of where um, Fireplace or Porto Maltese used to be um, is a great one. Our restaurants in the area um, for now are um, either focused on um, delivery or um, they already have spaces that are open, but this is a great idea for putting common outdoor seating and we're putting together a package to request additional funds from whoever we need to to make that happen. Um, and some of our <clears throat> restaurants do think it will be um, more useful probably in another month, but um, they are hearing, well, they are um, looking at their numbers and um, for some restaurants, not all of them, for some restaurants in Washington Square, um, the delivery is is the only way that they have a chance of making, um, of not losing money every day that they're open. And so I think we just all need to, you know, continue to trust our business owners and know what's best for them um, and be patient with them as they continue to open up in the way, in the pace um, that's safest for them and as well as their business model. Um, but I just wanna say thank you, thank you, thank you to Shalon for reaching out and getting some thoughts going here in Washington Square. So thank you. Great, I just checked the time thinking that like it was probably 9.30 or so. It's only 9.15, we're really cruising through our July 9th virtual town hall meeting. Um, so I, in terms of what we had prepared and updates, that's um, kind of all from us. So if you have additional questions or if there's an issue on your mind that you were hoping to discuss and explore more, feel free. All 
All right, question in the chat box. Harry S. Um, I was talking to the owner of Washington Square Tavern and he said his request for street seating was denied. Can you talk about Washington Street? Yes, Perry. So um, I have heard about this. I think my understanding is that Washington Square Tavern, which is right on the corner there between Beacon and Washington Street, had wanted to expand their outdoor seating um, into the parking space, which is that first parking space if you're taking the right onto um, Washington Street. And I think that there were serious safety concerns about um, uh, diner safety in that particular area. It's high traffic, the way people um, take the right-hand turn. I think there were some concerns about putting people in that parking space, um, but I we can certainly follow up on that. Um, Hey, Lucia from Tiny Hanger in Coolidge Corner. Um, is there more Coolidge Corner outdoor seating planned where? Thanks. Um, Kara, do you wanna talk about? Yeah, I can pull up um, a list, Lucia, of individual restaurants um, that now have permission um, in Coolidge Corner to open up and they haven't yet, but they do have permission to do so. Um, I know that Regal Beagle, for example, no longer Regal Beagle is um, expanding around into the alleyway. Um, uh, Bottega Fiorentina is expanding outdoors on that um, whole corner. Thanks to Sue Stein for connecting me with, with them. Um, and then a couple other restaurants um, across the street from Zaftig's. Um, they are exploring, I think, two or three parking spaces in a row for outdoor seating. Um, and then we're also talking with Paris Crapery. They're looking to do something really fun um, under the archway there. Um, trying to think what else. And then uh, Autos is expanded into um, the sidewalk and they're looking to expand into the street, which is great. And if there's any other suggestions for locations for common outdoor seating, um, we are hearing from some um, residents who keep bringing up the Coolidge Corner parking lot. Um, I, am, I am not certain that that would be helpful for our restaurants, but um, we are open to anything that the business community, you know, and especially the Coolidge Corner merchants um, were to say, yes, you know, we are we're in general agreement about putting seating here or there. Um, we would love to know. Yeah. And at yesterday's CCMA meeting, um, putting David Lashinsky on the spot here, um, but it, I thought it was interesting that um, some of the retailers were reporting that um, their sense is that with the outdoor seating, particularly in the evening, they're kind of seeing an uptick in, in their foot traffic. So um, that was encouraging to hear. And um, outdoor seating is our main focus at this point. So we're working with a lot of restaurants um, to think through what would be the best and safest way to do that. So David, I don't know if you had anything you wanted to add after yesterday's CCMA check-in. Oh, we can't hear you, David. And it doesn't look like you're... Hmm. Okay. Well, well, David troubleshoots his his audio. Um, we've got a couple more chats and comments in the. Can, I, can I have a follow up on this though? Well, oh, David, are you no. you go first. Oh, You're good, David. <laughs> okay. There we go. There How's this? Okay. There you go. You go ahead. Now I can't hear anybody else now. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Um, we hear you just fine. Here we go. Okay. Now, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Yay. Great. <laughs> what happens when you have so many devices connected and the system decides, oh, I'm going to connect to this device arbitrarily? Um, we haven't seen a return to economic life. It's been a little bit uneven and slow. There's days where um, traditionally they've been slow and all of a sudden we have see a surge of traffic. What's 
uh, what's been clear is that I think as the restaurants are starting to open up, but even more as the weather is nicer and people are getting more comfortable coming out um, or that, or they're getting desperate to come out, um, we've been seeing a bit more traffic. Most of the folks in Coolidge Corner have been operating on limited hours and we're seeing some, I guess you could say, desire on behalf of the uh, uh, pastor buys to try and come in when the stores themselves are closed. But things are still pretty much of a ghost land, you know, after about 6 p.m. So um, I'm also, Meredith, one of the things that I was trying to reach you to talk to discuss, and we can do this, you know, afterwards is to see about revitalizing the Coolidge Corner Cafe Pro, you know, cafe tables in generic spaces. Like, what would that look like? I know, for instance, we've had a number of instances already, as had other establishments where you hit maximum, people can't come in, they need a place to sit or to wait. Um, since cafe tables haven't been out, I know what we've experienced with folks who said, okay, we'll come back. And of course, sometimes they come back, sometimes they don't. So yeah. um, it's just an issue that I was gonna, uh, at this point, some of the merchants are interested in pursuing that and picking up the additional obligations and some are not quite yet. And I just wanted to understand what that means so I can let them know and see if we can get that moving again. And also, yeah, yeah that would definitely certainly augment available seating in Cooler's Corner if that starts to roll out. Yes, we should definitely connect with you and playing phone tag this week, but we should um, circle back and, and talk more about that. Excellent. Thank you, David. You bet. Before we get in here in this conversation, and I know um, we had a recently at the select board, we discussed all these different strategies and the, the board expressed an, an openness to the idea of um, closing down certain streets in commercial areas to provide more public public space. Um, I know that that's challenging to do. I'm wondering if you can talk about um, some of the challenges you're facing and figuring out uh, if that's something we're gonna do in Brookline, um, creating sort of these like sort of just uh, only for walking uh, and, and seating uh, outside our, our commercial areas. Yeah, I, I think, you know, we've also had some discussions about about what that would look like. I mean, there, the age old pro, you know, problem, of course, is saying if we take away too much um, available parking, it really has a negative impact on businesses because folks don't have a place to put their cars. People still do drive to this area and to be, um, you know, really um, obvious about it. Um, the merchants in Coolidge Corner cannot survive without bringing people in from outside the area. It's like can happen. We don't have enough of a population in this area. Even if we're just looking at people living in Brookline, they can't come to Coolidge Corner if there's no place to put their cars, if they're coming in from South Brookline, for instance. So that, that's something that we're very you know, wary of. Um, on the other hand, there's also a broad interest in trying to move to more of a cafe culture, you know, which would say that there is certainly support and interest in having um, uh, spaces that are open, that are interesting, that are um, attractive, that people want to just come out to hang out and enjoy, you know, enjoy the environments. Um, balancing those is challenging, you know, especially now that some parking has been removed due to COVID-19 um, sidewalk extensions, due to the MBTA bus coming through. Um, you know, many of us have, have dreamed of saying, can we throw a deck on the center street um, and then add some additional parking to replace what's being left off in the streets? And I think that's still something which is highly desirable and in fact would be a wonderful trade-off. I mean, I could certainly see saying, let's take away some um, spaces um, along Harvest Street, providing that we have some place to put the cars. Um, let's put up a deck, but let's also make it attractive doesn't have to look like a parking garage, you know? And I would actually say, let's build it and put a parking on top. So make it something that's a little bit more interesting. And then I think you'd have real buy-in both from the, the businesses as well as the residents. So I would say that, um, just to jump in, and the first part of David comments where um, he was talking about the balancing act and sort of the, um, the math equation of, uh, taking away parking spaces and how is that going to impact businesses has been an issue. Even when we've been exploring common area outdoor spaces, um, it's challenging to find consensus between 
um, some of the restaurants um, who would be the primary beneficiaries of expanded outdoor seating, um, and then some of the retailers or service businesses in the area that rely on um, the availability of parking so that their patrons can um, come and either do curbside pickup or um, go into the businesses. So uh, I'd say that has been a real challenge. Um, in terms of closing down streets, and Kara has been having a lot of conversations with businesses as well, but I haven't had a conversation with any business owners who have expressed strong support for closing down large sections of streets. Um, and I would assume that that's because they have reservations about how um, taking away access to those parking spaces might negatively impact them um, going forward. So I, I think that's the, the challenge that I've seen in my conversations with businesses. Mm -hmm. And that looks like Anne yeah. has that. I, I agree. Just to, I'm just wondering if, if there's something the town can do. I live at the beginning of Babcock Street and there are always spaces on the street and the John Street lot is almost empty. Since we're talking about just the summer, I mean, we're not gonna have outdoor seating in the winter um, when hopefully things will be better. I'm wondering if there's some PR, if, if the town can help to um, get the word out that there, and the center street lot is almost always empty as well. So right now, it seems to me it's easy to make that trade off as long as people know where to go to park. Um, it doesn't help the, the pick up in front of the restaurant issue but other than that it seems to me there must be some kind of way to do that i don't know what the answer is but maybe we should explore that signage is important showing people where to park as soon is an issue that has definitely come up before that we've discussed yeah so, i'll jump in and that the um what you said is is specifically you know i don't want to call out certain businesses on this forum but um the delivery and pickup you know, within, you know, 50 feet of the storefront is exactly, is the only thing that is making some of our businesses run right now. Um, mm -hmm. So I think we just have to, you know, be respectful of the whole business community um, and support, you know, any ideas that works, works for everybody. So Raul, thank you for raising that. It's, it's, it's clearly something where there's a lot of passion and also we have a lot of, um, I think opportunities to think uh, envision Coolidge Corner as well as the other commercial areas, but specifically Coolidge Corner as it moves into the, you know, this century a little bit more firmly. And David, I strongly recommend that you jump on that um, chamber conversation with our two state reps, um, one of whom, as you know, has made very clear not a single additional parking space shall be allowed with the parking garage. I know I've had discussions with him directly about that issue so yes, as recently as last week in my shop. Yep, have it again. <laughs> so we've got a couple of more comments and Q&A teed up in the Q&A box. Um, so Shulan added, going back to our outdoor seating discussion, um, the way I see it, if we can put public seating out in Washington Square, more residents will start frequenting the restaurants. Um, chicken or egg mm -hmm. question, I guess, um, in an effort to rebuild a sense of neighborhood carefully. Totally hear you. Um, we will continue to work with um, you and some of the other Washington Square business owners uh, to make progress on that. Um, Lucia added, I was thinking Center Street lot two, it's always empty all hours. Um, again, I think we are very open to recommendations. Um, it is helpful if they are, there are specific stakeholder restaurants identified who um, believe that, you know, setting up a common area outdoor seating lot will benefit their businesses. Um, it, it's just helpful to have that feedback. Um, I just add jumping here, cause that's, is, it, you know, the, at the end of the day, the question is what will um, entice customers back? What will they feel comfortable coming back to? What are the requirements that we need as a community before they actually will return to patronize the restaurants and, and the businesses? Uh, Debbie Miller from the chamber talked about the study that was done, I think in Beverly, uh, we since tweaked it a little bit and um, have just put that back out again to I know our constituency. Um, this might be something that we can actually have the town send out as well in this way. And the questions very much directly are saying, what will it take to bring people back, you know, for you as an individual to feel comfortable shopping in our commercial areas? Do we need to have a crew of people going around and cleaning twice a day? 
that are, that are um, visible, would that matter? Do we need more plexiglass barriers in places? Does that matter? Do we need to have people wiping down, you know, doorknobs? We don't know. Um, and if we get more people uh, responding to this, it'll actually hopefully give us some data and guidance so that we'll know how to respond. Yes. yes. Um, we had right. a I'm going to put that link out in the, um, the chat box there. Yes. Um, and I think last time I checked in with uh, Debbie earlier this week about the consumer survey, um, there, there weren't a ton of responses still. So if um, people have neighborhood association listservs or um, ways that they, we can get that out to other members or corners of the Brookline business or community in general, that would be very helpful. Um, we have a question from an anonymous attendee. This is a great question. I noticed that the store Leaf Company in Brookline Village closed. Do you have statistics on how many restaurants are closed at the moment? Great question. Um, the town, we conduct an annual storefront survey where we literally walk around in um, uh, every business district and take inventory of the storefronts. Uh, we typically do that in the fall, late September, October. Um, we are planning on doing a um, kind of interim storefront survey uh, just to get a sense of um, where we're at in terms of um, vacancies. And I definitely have also observed some store closings. At the same time, we've also seen several stores opening in the midst of the pandemic. We had Dumpling Daughter. Um, I think Ivory Pearl is coming to Washington Square soon. Um, so there there are um, glimmers of, of hope. Um, so, um, but we will at some point, hopefully by the end of July, um, we'll be able to uh, take inventory, at least of our largest commercial areas being Brookline Village and Coolidge Corner. Uh, Brooke from Mint Julep in Coolidge Corner said, more beautiful outdoor spaces like Hamilton's will draw people. Look at Waltham, the North End, the more the merrier. Mm -hmm. um, yes, totally hear that. Uh, we're working on it. And if people have specific recommendations or restaurants, um, you know, that they've uh, that have indicated that they're interested in moving forward with those types of things. We want to talk to them. We want to make it happen. Um, but I think our ask to businesses as you're talking with your fellow businesses is just to um, try to generate some leads um, so that we can approach those businesses and, and get going. Uh, all right. And Debbie just included um, I don't know if I see the survey link in there, Debbie. Um, okay, Perry S. Um, can we do a quick survey of how much unused slash empty parking spaces there are given data? Seems like the data would help illuminate the policy discussions. I agree. Um, we can certainly touch base with, in all of our outdoor seating discussions, Todd Corain, the town's transportation administrator, has been involved in all of them. Um, so we can relay that back to him certainly um, and, and see where we can go from there. But I would, <clears throat> I think the key thing with outdoor seating, and I know this is something people are very interested in, this is something that the town is very focused on right now. Um, we are not, um, in instances where we've just sort of made a determination that we think that this could be a good area for something like common outdoor area seating. Um, it's not a slam dunk for all of the, the stakeholders in that area. So um, to the extent where business organizations can give a sense of consensus that something would be valuable to that business area, I think that would be really helpful to staff and being able to move things forward um, because um, we want to help our restaurants and um, bring vibrancy to our commercial areas, but we also don't want that to um, negatively impact other businesses as collateral damage in the process. So. Um, those are just my thoughts on that. Okay. Shulan from Washington Square. If there is a choice, it would be better to focus on securing public seating over trying to close streets. Um, we only have 2.5 more months of dependable warm weather. Excellent point. Definitely agree. Liz Linder, uh, we're still collecting portraits and stories for the series at work in a pandemic and coordinating with economic development team and big as well. Please reach out to uh, Liz Linder studio if you are interested in a session. Um, so, uh, and Liz, if you want to pop your um, email contact in the chat box too, I think that might be easier for people to access it there as well. Thank you, Liz. 
And Debbie's got the survey link in the chat. And just, um, I'll jump in adding on to Liz's comment and I'll try to find it if, if she doesn't put it in there. There's a um, Vimeo link to um, several of the photos that she's taken to date along with some commentary um, by her. It's extremely powerful, the work that she's done for the town already. Um, and I'm really thrilled that she's still willing to keep that project open and capture a couple more of our businesses and nonprofits in Brookline. Um, at the same time as she's wrapping that up, we are starting to roll out um, those photos on our SUFA signs and we're trying to think of other ways to um, get this really important body of work out in the public sphere. Um, and so as we put those out in SUFA, um, we will let you all know maybe at, at our next meeting in a couple of weeks. And if everybody could repost some of those images to their own customers, um, I do strongly believe that seeing photos of humans <laughs> that are in our local area will be a strong draw for our residents to support our businesses locally. Um, I wonder, let me see if I can try to find, oh, Liz says that the chat's disabled for her. Let me try to find the Vimeo link and um, I'll put that in the chat box. All right, so I think those are all of the questions that we had teed up in the Q&A box. So back to you, Raul. Sure, um, but just a couple things. Uh, you know, one is uh, nonprofits are struggling in very unique ways. And I wanna make sure that we recognize that. Um, uh, our very own Coolidge Corner Theater um, recently announced that they're, they're, these, um, these restrictions of, of 25, um, uh, no more than 25 in, a, in an indoor space, um, make it impossible for them to, to run um, their business. Uh, I, I'm not, you know, we've had um, representation from the Puppet Showplace Theater on these calls, and there are many other arts organizations that rely on ticket sales to performances and um, for you know folks visiting galleries and things like that that have been also struggling in really unique ways. Um, so just a reminder to reach out to the nonprofits that um, that that you love and care about and that we also rely upon as a community um, to to really have a, a sort of a thriving community. Part of it is is our arts and nonprofit scene as well. Um, so, so do what you can to reach out to them or check out their websites and see how they're asking you to support them during these times. Um, it's really important and it's, um, you know, places, you know, we can't not have places like the Coolidge Corner Theater um, and the Puppet Showplace Theater and other um, arts organizations in our community. We just can't not have that. Um, so we've got to do what we can to keep them going. So, um, so please do that. Uh, and as always, um, I want to thank our overlords at the Brookline Interactive Group. Uh, for keeping us um, on on and active, um, I don't know, um, Kathy. How how many live streams is it up to since this pandemic began? Do you know that you've done for for the town for, of Brookline for for the community? I lost count. I think a week ago, so I have to go back. But we were we were about at three hundred then around July Fourth weekend. So we've done over three hundred live uh, community meetings and municipal meetings, and we'll continue doing it. Yeah, thank you. No, y'all are an absolute treasure, and so thank you for um, for keeping us up and running. Um, I, Dave, I do have to say, yeah, yeah, I do have, actually have a question because um, I've 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 continued to hear um, um, guidance about people being outdoors as being more um, effective, uh, being in enhanced airflow. And I don't know if any of you guys have experienced a flood in your house, but we have. You know, where they bring the guys in with these giant air movers to try and uh, dry things out. Um, and this might be a question for Abby. Has anybody looked at what's the effect of having these just giant movers or increasing air circulation with fans in some establishments like retail stores or in theaters? I know it might be hard to hear, but I think you can, you know, work around that. But the question is, has that been looked at as an effective way of helping to keep down the um, dangers of being in an indoor space? Um, so I don't know if the fans themselves have been considered. Um, the guidance that, that exists currently strongly encourages improving ventilation in any businesses, like as a way to help keep the air flowing and, and lessen 
the risk of being in there, you know, because mm-hmm. as we all know, it gets very stuffy if you're inside and the air's not moving. So obviously with an, a respiratory illness that's spread through respiratory droplets, being enclosed is going to make that worse. So keeping windows open, um, doors open if possible, which in restaurants is more of a dodgy proposition because of the pest management issue there. But um, I can't really speak to whether the fans have been explored as an option. I mean, it seems reasonable to me that that would be one way to increase the ventilation, you know, assuming that they're set up in the right way in a way that doesn't generate like dust or something like that, that would then cause other issues. Um, especially like in a restaurant setting, you know, fans get very dirty with dust and then they could blow onto the food surface, food preparation surfaces and things like that. But um, I haven't come across anything like that, but I wouldn't be surprised if it is something that's being considered. Okay. Good to know if there's, um, we good to see if we could figure out if there's any guidance. I know for us in the store, we've been putting on the, our, um, we have a way of automatically controlling the fan. So we now have the fan going 24 seven to move things around. But it occurred to me that, um, oh, maybe we can get a couple of fans just to keep moving the air around. Um, not in a way that's causing other dangers of kicking up dust and things, but simply to um, uh, disable the virus. So. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks. Um, well, with that, um, I'll, I'll remind you that we'll be next meeting here on Thursday, July 23rd, two weeks from now. Um, at 9 a.m. And with that said, uh, you know that we're available in the interim. You know how to reach us. um, And that goes for Meredith, Kara, myself, um, folks in our public health department, um, and others. Uh, Please reach out um, with any questions you have in the meantime, and and we'll be available um, to respond to them. So um, thanks, everybody, for your time with us. I will be joining that um, 10 o'clock call um, uh, hosted by the chamber. Uh, with representatives Fitolo and Elugado, uh, and I hope you'll join us there too. So uh, thanks, everybody. See you soon. Care.